We are recounting the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj. We heard yesterday how Dhruva Maharaj after returning from the forest and his father saw how Dhruva Maharaj had matured and after some time he put him on the throne, he gave him the kingdom. So Dhruva Maharaj became the ruler of the planet. At, but at some point there was a problem, his brother Uttama was killed and then Dhruva Maharaj made war with the Yakshas and he had killed many Yakshas. So at that time, Swayambhuvamanu came to Dhruva Maharaj and ins instructed him that while one Yaksha had killed his brother, Dhruva Maharaj had killed many, many Yakshas in revenge for the death of his brother. And Swayambhuvamanu then told Dhruva Maharaj that this is very offensive to Kuvera because Kuvera is the king of the Yakshas and Kuvera is very angry and he requested Dhruva Maharaj that you should give up this anger and you should go to Kuvera and you should get forgiveness. However, before Dhruva Maharaj actually went to see Kuvera, it happened that Kuvera came to see Dhruva Maharaj because Kuvera had heard that Dhruva Maharaj had given up his anger and he was not going to fight anymore. So Kuvera was very pleased and he came to meet Dhruva Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj respected him, offered his obeisances to him and uh, at that time Kuvera explained to Dhruva Maharaj, he said, actually, you didn't kill anybody and, and, and uh, you were not responsible for killing Yakshas and no Yaksha was responsible for killing your brother. They were all killed by inevitable time, which is the manifestation of the personality of Godhead. We see in the Bhagavad Gita also, Lord Krishna displayed his Kala Rup, his form of time to Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. And at that time, Arjuna was bewildered on seeing the Kala Rup because he saw so many of the great personalities who were fighting in the battle of Kurukshetra. He saw them all being devoured. They were all entering the mouths of the Lord and being devoured. At that time, Arjuna requested Krishna, who are you? And Lord Krishna replied, Kalosmin Yoka Loka Christ Krit Lord Krishna said, Time I am, destroyer of the world, and I come to claim all people. And but for you, Pandavas? Everyone in the battle was going to meet their death. So Lord Krishna revealed himself in the form of time there at Kurukshetra. And Kuvera explained to Dhruva Maharaj the same thing, that actually the death of all the Yakshas, all of his, all of his fellow Yakshas, and the death of Dhruva Maharaj's brother Uttama, it was not due to any particular person, but rather it was all due to the nature of inevitable time, that everyone meets their death in the course of time. And in this way, Kuvera went on to uh, speak to Maharaj 
explained to Kuvera that I simply want to have full faith in the Supreme Lord and to be able to remember the Lord. Please bless me with that, that I can always remember the lotus feet of the Lord and I'll always have full faith in him. So, Srila Prabhupada, in his purport on this section, he brings up the topic of uh, worshipping demigods. He, said, he, he asks, he said, is it proper for a devotee to take a benediction from a demigod? Because we know in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna doesn't speak very highly about the demigods. Lord Krishna says that people of who, people whose minds are distorted by material desires, they will worship the demigods and the results of their worship, the fruit will be limited and temporary. And if you worship the demigods and you will go to the planets of the demigods, you won't go to the supreme abode. So in this way, the demigod worship is not so much appreciated by Lord Krishna. But we do see that on certain occasions there are some devotees who do worship demigods. And of course one of the most common examples given is the gopis. Now the gopis are generally, the gopis of Vrindavan are considered to be the topmost devotees. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu always recognized the gopis as being the greatest devotees of Lord Krishna. And uh, the gopis were asking, they were worshipping the goddess Katyayani. Actually, I think we're still in the period of Katyayani Vrat at this time. It goes on for about one month. And the gopis, young girls, young unmarried women, they will go to the Yamuna early in the morning to take their bath in the Yamuna and they will worship the goddess Katyayani. The gopis did this to get Krishna as their husband. Every morning they would go and they would chant a prayer worshipping the goddess Katyayani. They would make a little deity from mud and water they would make themselves one deity of the goddess Katyayani. They would offer some flowers and puja to the deity. And in this way they would offer their prayer to Katyayani that they could get Krishna for a husband. So the gopis were worshipping a demigoddess, but their purpose was to get Krishna as their husband. So it's pointed out that if one worships the demigods for Krishna's pleasure and for the for devotional service to help and or to help our devotional service, then it's allowed. It's not wrong. We're worshiping the demigods to get something for the pleasure of Krishna. It's not wrong. The gopis wanted Krishna for their husband, not for their own pleasure for Krishna's pleasure. They wanted to give pleasure to Krishna. The gopis are always thinking how to please Krishna. They don't think about their own happiness. Just like in the Shikshastakam, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us how to pray to Krishna uh, he prays, Aslishya va padaratam panastumam adarshna marmatam karotu va yatatatata vidadatu lampato mat prana natas tu saeva na paraha. So it is said this final verse of the Shikshastikam represents the words of Srimati Radharani and her mood in worshipping Krishna, that she describes Krishna as Lampata. Lampata means one who is in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna does Kaviraj 
explains the meaning of this verse as, uh, as uh, the gopi is saying to Krishna that uh, the gopi is saying to Krishna that if my being unhappy makes you happy, then that is my happiness. Right? That's an interesting thought. The ladies might consider this, right? You know, you should, my dear husband, if my being unhappy makes you happy, that is my happiness. Yeah, a bit difficult. Yeah. That, that, Srila Prabhupada said, that is the nature of love in the spiritual world. We don't get that kind of love here on the material, in the material world. But on the, on the highest level of, the, of spirituality, in the spiritual realm, this is the mood of Srimati Radharani in relationship to Krishna. So the gopis worship Katyayani to get Krishna. It's approved. And similarly, also, uh, you have Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj was the emperor of the world. He was performing sacrifices and he was doing puja and offering worship to different demigods. But the purpose was to please the Supreme Lord. He was worshipping the different demigods, not as the Supreme but he recognized them as different limbs of the Lord. That they all have one, they represent one part of the body of the Supreme Lord. Just like they would say that the sun is like the eye of the Lord. And so different demigods, they represent different functions of the universal body. And in this way, Bharat Maharaj was performing worship, performing sacrifices. But ultimately, his purpose was to please the Supreme Lord. Now, sometimes you will see also in Ramayana that Lord Rama is worshipping Lord Shiva. So, people become confused when they see that we, you know, they, we think, well, isn't Lord Rama the Supreme Lord? Why is he worshipping Lord Shiva? Before going to Lanka, he performed worship of Lord Shiva. So one way in which Srila Prabhupada explained this, he said, Lord Rama is simply telling Lord Shiva that I'm going to kill your devotee. So this was how Srila Prabhupada explained it. Another way in which we could understand it is that Lord Rama, as the perfect king, as Mariyada Avatar, one who shows the perfect example, he wants to teach the example to the common man. Therefore, he's performing this kind of worship, just simply as an example for other people to follow because he wants that they should also worship. They should perform worship. Now, the worship Lord Shiva, that is the god of the material world. Not everyone is able to understand the transcendental position of Lord Krishna. Not everyone is so qualified that they can understand the highest level of spirituality. So they can worship Lord Shiva, who is the god of the material world. In this way, worship of the demigods is understood. So here we see Dhruva Maharaj, he took the benediction from Kuvera. But what benediction was it? So that he could always remember the Supreme Lord and that he would always uh, be describing the qualities of the Lord and engaged in the service of the Lord. So Lord Sh uh, Dhruva Maharaj in this way very much pleased Kuvera by his action. And then Kuvera, he just simply left that place. And Dhruva Maharaj continued 
to rule the kingdom, performing his duty. I said, well, I know it's difficult, but it is possible by constant practice and detachment. Abhyasena tu kuntiya vairagyena chagriyate. Constant practice and detachment. However, a much more feasible process is by worshipping the deity. We come here and you can see we have installed the deities. It's much more appropriate for us to worship the deity. And by performing this process of archana, then we can fix our mind on the form of the Lord. The Lord is certainly a person and he has form. However, we should understand that form is not material. We look at it with our material vision and we think the Lord is material. We think he has a form, a material form. However, we should understand the Lord's form is not material, but rather it is a completely pure and transcendental form. And this was described by Lord Brahma in the very beginning of his prayers, in the fifth chapter of his prayers. Ishvara Param Paramakrishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha that Lord Krishna, who is the Supreme Controller, he has a form which is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. So when we see the deities, we should understand also that the Lord has appeared in the deity form. And the form of the deity is that form of Satchit Ananda. We want to always Remember that when we look at the deities, don't see the deities with our conditioned eyes, but see the form of the Lord with the help of the revealed scriptures. We say, Shastra Chaksus, to see everything through the eye of the scriptures. We see the Lord's form as being pure and transcendental. If we simply see the deity, if we think the deity is just a statue, just some material elements, then that becomes an offense. So we have to understand the transcendental nature of the form of the deity. So Dhruva Maharaj, however, in Satya Yuga, he was practicing this process of meditation remembering the form of the Lord, and he was able to fix his mind on the Lord, just as he had done when he was a young child, when he was only five years old. He had pleased the Supreme Lord. So now, after living in the world and ruling the world for some 36,000 years, he had again retired to Himalayas, and he was again practicing this meditation process and remembering the Lord's form. In this way, his body became liberated. The example is given just like the coconut, which is inside the husk of a coconut. Sometimes the coconut will dry. So the inner shell of the coconut will separate from the outer shell. So in the same way, Dhruva Maharaj's spiritual body was completely awakened, although he was living within the body, within the physical body. His body became fully transcendental. And when his body became fully transcendental, then at that time, he saw the airplane appear from the sky a brilliantly effulgent golden airplane appeared. This airplane was visible only to those pure souls. Without being pure, you cannot see these kind of things. Prabhupada quotes Brahma Samhita, 
Premanjana Charita Bhakti Vilochanina Santa Sadaiva Ridaishu Vilokayanti where you are going to live eternally. So Dhruva Maharaj, on receiving these two men, he is, uh, we, we would wonder, you know, oh, quick, let me get in the airplane, take me out here. <laughs> but what does Dhruva Maharaj do? Before, before doing anything, he, said, he first of all goes back to his, uh, to finish his, spiritual practice, he takes bath and he goes to all the people, other people who are living there in Badarik Ashram and he offers obeisances to everyone and he gets their blessings and in this way he prepares himself, then he comes before the airplane and he circumambulates the airplane and he offers his obeisances to the airplane and Prabhupada explains how everything in relation to the Lord is spiritual. So he said that airplane, that is also spiritual because it's come from the spiritual world. Just as the Holy Dham is spiritual, it's not reading the books, worshipping Krishna, the activities, the business of the devotee is the same. Just opportunity to help him get into the airplane and rotate around this pole star. But when Dhruva Maharaj got into the airplane, then he remembered to meet the Lord when I was a young boy. So I'm very indebted to my mother. Mother being 